y'all dealing with the king. If you want to come and get it, let the outlaw get you out your seats. You want sports talk politics? He don't give a shit. Broken says speaks, follow it. About to issue y'all a master class. You want to pass? Come slinging the new podcast, eat candy ass. Robert Toss, bitch, get information. It's your boy, John Roker. Welcome to the Outlaw Nation. Welcome, everybody, to this week's edition of the Outlaw Nation. That's right. You guys said whenever I can squeeze in the time, uh, you don't care where I'm recording it, when I'm recording it, how long I'm recording it. So I'm recording it once again as I drive into work uh, to Collider, and uh, I just uh, wanted to do an episode. So um, how are you all doing? How's life treating you? Uh, how are things happening in your world? How are you preparing for the holidays? Uh, that's really important. Like, are you doing what you need to do? Like, are you taking a break for yourself? You know, not stressing yourself out too much. Are you also, uh, you know, are you meditating? Are you taking walks? Are you doing some chanting? Uh, you know, the holidays are a tough time for a lot of people. And so uh, I know that, you know, these are these are when the high, uh, high depression steps in for a lot of people. How, you know, uh, people get uh, depressed or not with somebody or they have issues with their family or they don't have, an, you know, a lot of friends or they spend Christmas and the holidays alone, whatever you celebrate, Christmas, Hanukkah, you know, whatever you celebrate um, during this time. Uh, and so that usually comes, you know. And so I hope you're doing what you need to do to kind of like square your mind away. Get it all settled up and, and uh, you know, uh, appreciate the holidays rather than dread the holidays or, you know, um, feel depressed about uh having to confront them so because there's a lot going on there's a lot happening i mean star wars uh return of, what the last jedi comes out today um at least here in la i don't know if it, it's already come out in some of your countries if you're listening to me in a foreign country or some of your cities uh maybe it comes out a little bit later in some of your cities i i don't know uh but i know it's you know i know i know it's coming out here in la tonight i'm going with my friends uh tonight it's going to be a massive crowd of people going it's going to be insane so um it should be a lot of fun though to see it again i saw it already uh at a screening on monday night and i'm i need to see it again just to unpack everything i saw because uh i'm not trying to spoil anything but there's a lot that goes on in this movie so um i look forward to hearing what people think uh you know feel free to tweet at me or uh respond in the youtube comments or um however you want to reach out to me and, and let me know what you thought about the movie i'm sure i'll post an instagram post of our entire crew. Um, yeah, so that's uh, there's that to look forward to. There's a lot of movies out right now uh, that you might enjoy. You know, go back and see some other movies if you feel like it. Um, but a lot of people want to know how my experience with The Rock went, how it went down in Hawaii, so I should talk about that uh, as I uh, drive in here. Um, okay, so The Rock, th- this, was all, this all happened like at the last minute. You know, uh, my boss at Collider came up to me and he was like, hey... Um, do you want to go to Hawaii to interview The Rock? And I'm like, what? And he's like, yeah, do you have any plans for Thanksgiving? And so for once, being single and not having responsibilities to go to see, uh, to go to my girlfriend's or wife's uh, uh, family for Thanksgiving or my family for Thanksgiving uh, or anything like that uh, came, uh, like came to my benefit or it was in my benefit because I didn't have any plans and he said, yeah, will you go and interview The Rock in Hawaii? I'm like, absolutely. So I've never been to Hawaii. Um, they said I was going for three days, and it was going to be a whirlwind trip. So we would fly in that day uh, and watch the movie that night at a screening, a special screening. Then the next day they would take us out to this place, and then we would get to interview The Rock on Tuesday and then jump on a plane that night. So it was a hell of a thing. So I didn't really get a lot of opportunities to savor being out in Hawaii because I was really focused on getting everything right. You know, I'm still building, still, uh, you know, kind of wanting to leave good, um, a good, uh, what do you call it? Good foundation for my career. So, you know, I have to, I have to focus on getting it all right. So, uh, so yeah, we, I flew in, uh, you know, everything I squared away and I was able to go and, you know, they were like, you got to do something unique. You got to do something different to make you stand out from other uh, interviews or, you know, don't ask the standard stuff. Sorry, I got somebody who is next to me playing their music really, really loud because apparently they need to show you that they're badass so they need to play their uh, their music really, really loud. So, yes, I get it. You're important or you have a small penis, either one. I don't know. But anyway, yeah, so um, we flew in to uh, on the, what, was it on Sunday? Yeah, we flew in on Sunday. Uh 
when we got in, it was really just uh, beautiful. I mean, honestly, incredibly beautiful uh, state. And if you've never been to Hawaii, find a way to go. Um, if like if you're a person who likes to travel, uh, and you haven't been to Maui or um, Oahu or any of the uh, islands, uh, I can't encourage you enough to go. It's such a fun experience, and there's a lot of uh, things to see and enjoy and savor. Uh, in that state, and I was very lucky to um, have that experience to be able to go. And uh, when I went, uh, I got there, took the cab ride over to the hotel, uh, which was which was not a pretty, um, which was a pretty penny. It was not cheap. And then um, and then uh, after that, um, you know, got into the hotel, and I couldn't believe where they put us it's just beautiful uh resort and suite type place uh and it was just incredible how beautiful it was like all the um the room was just so huge and it was there were two sinks in the bathroom on opposite sides there was a bath there was a shower uh there was so much to experience just in the room itself in terms of luxury and it was oceanfront so the first thing i did was i just dropped everything in the room, I had like two hours or three hours rather. And for the first hour, I just kind of sat on the balcony and just kind of listened to the waves and listened to the birds. Uh, and the birds you were just so distinct and loud, uh, which was really enjoyable and just took it all in, you know, just took it all in that this is the next step of my life and next experience of my life, you know, having to come here, having to come to Hawaii rather and do this interview. So, um, after that, I went down. I just got some drinks. I met up with uh, Mike Rougeau, who's over at um, I think GameSpot, um, and we just kind of caught up because I think we'd we'd met each other at the Baywatch junket and we talked for a little bit, uh, and then we just kind of caught up and had a nice conversation, had some drinks, uh, and talked about the business a little bit, industry, and all that jazz, and um, it was a really fun time. And then went up, changed clothes, went downstairs, and we uh, had we, we got ready for the screening. It took us over to the screening, um, which was in this beautiful theater, and you know we were able to order whatever refreshments we wanted, which was really great, like as much popcorn or chocolate or soda as we wanted, whatever we wanted, we were able to get. Um, and they sat us in the nice reserve section, which is the leather with the leather seats. And uh, we, I don't know if you guys have been to the, one of the higher end theaters that have been popping up around the country, but those leather seats and where you can like jack your feet up. On the, uh, you know, on the, uh, I don't know, what would you call it, a footrest that they put? Um, I, I highly recommend it. It's very choice. Um, so then we, you know, watched the movie, and I had an absolute blast watching the movie. I, I can't even, I'm not bullshitting you. Like, some people, like, went after me because I put that it was fun. Now, oh, I get it, fun, meaning not good. And that's absolute bullshit. It was good movie and a lot of fun. And I don't have fun at bad movies. Like, that's, that's, that's just not something I do. Um, even the Transformers movies look those are guilty pleasures that's a different situation but I don't go into the snowman I'm like oh this is so good it's so bad it's so fun no I don't do that kind of stuff so uh, but Jumanji was an absolute blast and so much fun and so great and funny and you know Jack Black really steals the movie um, with his ability to portray the fi- this 15 year old girl um, without insulting the 15 year old girl that's what's so great about what he does in the movie jack black is he's just so natural in playing it he knows exactly how to play the humor of the situation without insulting uh the character that is that he is uh, embodying inside uh his own body you know and the little things that he does and and each of the characters has things they're confronting throughout this experience when they body swap and uh you know demons that they're or issues that they're confronting about themselves or about their ability to lead or about what they think they need to be in order to survive in the world or to be successful in the high school world and all of us remember what it's like to be in high school and not and you know i don't know if any cool kids are listening to me on on outlaw nation but most of us weren't cool kids in high school most of us you know we we found our crew or our friends and then we kind of hung on to them for dear life um and dealt with bullies and dealt with the pretty people making fun of us or you know the cool people joking about our economic status or our clothes or whatever so that was something or being into nerd stuff you know i'm from the time when you got made fun of for being into nerd stuff and 
got beat up for being in the nerd stuff. So, you know, maybe that, I'm sure that doesn't happen anymore to the extent that it did when we were kids, uh, when I was a kid, rather. But um, it still, you know, is something that people deal with all the time in high school, which is basically your identity, who you are, you know, and what uh, who you're going to be and, uh, you know, what's what's required of you to make that happen, you know. So those are things that you you confront in high school. And so, um, it was, uh, it's fun to see, it was fun to see them, uh, pursue that in such a interesting and positive way, which I really thoroughly enjoyed. So, um, yeah, then, then, uh, what happened? Then we, uh, got out of there, um, and, uh, just went back to the hotel and I went straight to bed because I just was super tired. And I know we had a long day the next day cause we had to get up at seven. We had to be in the lobby at seven fifteen AM. So, couldn't even relax uh, the Monday uh, after flying in. Had to get right out the door and be down the lobby at seven fifteen a.m. So, uh, what was? Why do we have to be there that early? Because they were taking us to a place called Kualua Ranch, and in that place, uh, they took us ATV riding. They had us shoot some stand-ups where we were like in front of these uh, places where they shot a lot of movies. So they shot a lot of movies in this place in Kualua Ranch. They shot Kong Skull Island. They shot um, uh, a bunch of movies. Jurassic Park. They shot a bunch of movies there. And so we were um, able to uh, go there and kind of shoot some stand-ups in front of locations that they had shot movies at. The Lost Shelter was there. So uh, some of us got to drive up onto our ATVs and go into the Lost Shelter, which I was I was jealous that I didn't get a chance to do that. I wasn't in the group that uh, could do that because they split us up into separate groups to go and do that and uh, unfortunately I was not uh, part of that group to go over to the Lost Ranch so um, uh, then what else then we yeah then we finally got onto the to the ATVs and had a blast doing that so we were able to enjoy ourselves a little bit doing that and uh, and then once we got done uh, with the stand ups the ATV was awesome like I don't know if you've ridden an ATV or been on an ATV, but it is one of the best experiences uh, I've ever had. And it's essentially like riding a three-wheel motorcycle, um, which I thoroughly enjoyed. And you're able to, like, stand up and do crazy things on it. And, you know, they encourage you not to do too many, like, uh, weird things on the ATV, but you could still enjoy yourself for the most part of what you were doing. And that's what I I, I thoroughly got out of it, was being able to do all those kinds of things. And um, So for me for me it was just a joy to be able to do that and i was riding with a good good bunch of people um that i had met uh through there because i really didn't know that many people when i first showed up and then uh, roth was there. roth from screen junkies was there and gray drake from rotten tomatoes and a bunch of other people and so i was able to feel more comfortable um and so once we do, you know we were able to ride on those uh, and it just rained so there was no there was no sun out and it was kind of overcast the whole day so we were to ride through a lot of the mud and do all that kind of stuff and go a little, like do a little donuts, uh, things like that in the ATV. So uh, it was just a super, super great time. And I was caked in mud um, and I couldn't have been happier. And then I went back to the, um, to the hotel and took a nice warm bath for like 45 minutes and just kind of chilled out and started thinking about my interview. Cause that was the thing. Like I had to come up, we couldn't figure out how to make it unique. Like, right, you, you know, there was all kinds of things that uh, we had come up with Christian and I, and uh, Mark and a bunch of other people were just kind of contributing what they thought. And I couldn't, it didn't quite 100% like click with me. So the majority of the trip was me worrying about what I was going to ask them. What am I going to ask them? How am I going to be unique? You know, because initially I thought I was going to interview The Rock. And then when we arrived on Sunday, they told me, no, you're interviewing The Rock, Kevin Hart, and Jack Black together. So that adjusts what you have to do in an interview. And to be unique, you got to find a way to stand out. And so I was like super stressed because I'm like, well, well, what if I arm wrestle them or what if I, what if we come up with a song or something, right? And, um, and then they told me that I interviewed Nick Jonas. So a one-on-one interview with Nick Jonas. So that was uh, something else I had to prepare for. So a lot of the time while I was down there was me focusing on what I was going to ask them or what I was going to say. So when I was lying in the bath, I'm just kind of thinking about things. Christian called and we had a couple of conversations about like what, what, what it should be. Well, we, it wasn't quite clicking, and, and you know we were kicking it around. So um, 
after that, I you know got dressed because they invited us downstairs to have uh, drinks and cakes because they had set out a bunch of cakes for us to try. There was like red velvet, German chocolate, um, all kinds of cakes. I you know I'm, all of them are uh, uh, you know there was a um, lemon pie. There was just a bunch of different types of cakes and tastes that you could enjoy, and the drinks were all free. So being a huge pina colada guy. Uh, I had a couple of pina coladas, and then I had this thing called Blue Hawaii, which is essentially a pina colada with vodka. Now, ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you something. That drink is the devil, because I had four of those things, and I was completely sloshed. And I had a great time. Uh, just, you know, everyone else was drinking too, so we all had a really fun time just talking about stuff and being drunk and, and, and just having a good time and uh, had some great conversations, some great life conversations with people. Um, uh, and it was just fun, just so much fun. And um, then, you know, went to bed and uh, I could barely sleep because I was, uh, it was still, I hadn't still cracked it. I hadn't cracked it. I, hadn't, I didn't know what I was going to ask them. Uh, so it was just like worried about that. What's it going to be? What's it going to be? And then finally that morning, Chris and I were having a conversation and boom, it hit us like the idea of the promo, doing the promo off. And that is what finally cracked the nut. And I said, yeah, that's perfect. Because The Rock had recorded a promo for me doing the Baywatch stuff. So I was a big fan of that. So we thought, well, wouldn't it be funny if we did a promo off where we pit me against Jack Black and Kevin Hart and The Rock would be the judge. Now, this is a ballsy decision to make, right? Because we don't know that they're going to say yes. And that's the thing that you have to understand about doing these junkets. Like, you can prepare, but you better have a backup plan and then a backup plan for your backup plan because you never know what mood the actors or the directors or the producers are going to be in and if they're going to be willing to do what you ask them to do or what you want to do. You know, they might not feel it's in their brand or... Uh, something they like feel comfortable doing so you got to have a bunch of plans so for me once we did the promo thing once we cracked the promo I was able to relax and it was the first time since I had landed in Hawaii that I was able to relax and focus on it and I you know made some notes and I practiced the promo for like an hour in the bedroom in the room uh, of the uh, of the hotel and just you know and then I came downstairs and I was ready and I was like okay and then I made, you know, obviously I made some backup plans, a couple of backup plans, but I was really flying by the seat of my pants with the backup plans. You know, I hadn't, I hadn't planned those out quite as thoroughly as the promo off. Uh, so, cause I just felt like that was going to be the right thing. And I felt like the guys were going to go along with it if I presented it in the right way. Luckily for me, all I kept hearing from other people was they were in a great mood and they were like having fun improv and doing stuff. And, but I was told like, you're going to get like maybe a chance to ask one question. So I said, that's perfect, because if I just ask for the promo off, that's my one question, and that'll be the time, you know? And we were told we were going to get five minutes, and then when it all played, it all played out, I actually got less than five minutes, um, and I was having to adjust on the fly. So um, when I got down there, you know, they set up this, like, nice area for you to, like, there's food, there's drinks, where you chill out. It's like a press area. You just chill out. And it was all outdoors. So we were interviewing them, interviewing them outdoors. Uh, which was beautiful, right by the beach, um, Oceanside, you would say. Uh, and everyone's really nice. Like, uh, Sony just took care of us. Sony was really fantastic. And I want to give a shout out to Patrick Santiago, who was our contact while we were down there. Patrick just took care of us. What a genuinely awesome dude. Uh, very nice. And, you know, very, very just a sweet dude who wanted us to do the best we could and wanted to provide us anything we needed so that we would be comfortable uh, doing the interviews and be in our best mood as well, you know. So anyway, um, when I got down there, got ready uh, for the interview, they told us that it was delayed by a couple of hours, So, which is standard. Like, you guys should know this. Like, you get assigned a time, but you have to be prepared to either um, be delayed or be moved up by a little bit. So you just have to be prepared. As soon as you, as soon as you sign in, you're basically saying, I'm ready. And so... They can either push you or they can uh, push you back, rather, or push you up. So you just have to, as soon as you sign in, just have to say to yourself, okay, I am ready for this interview just in case it happens right after I sign up. Or if they need to push me back, I can wait and delay and prepare some more. So that's what happened. Uh, so they waited till after lunch, and I was the first person to interview them after lunch. I was, you know, I'd run it by a bunch of the other people who were down there. 
they were really nice uh, to give me some pointers. You know, Gray Drake and Roth and Nikki Novak, who I met down there, really sweet. Nikki Novak is just fantastic. If you don't follow, her, if you don't follow any of these people that I'm talking about, follow them. They're really cool people to follow on Twitter, and they they do great work. And it's stuff you can definitely learn a lot from. Uh, either whether you want to, you know, know more about these people in terms of the stars or whatever, uh, or about the subjects that they're covering. Uh, they're just really great writers and, and, and uh, hosts and interviewers. So I was, I was surrounded by a bunch of really cool people because this is my only, what, second or third press junket. So I'm still learning. You know, for all I've done, I'm still learning these experiences, you know. And so um, so when I walked up there, I was the first one after lunch. And, you know, they just called. There was three people in line, but they called me ahead of those two other people. And I was like, all right, here we go. Uh, walked in. Um, they first had to do an interview for Australia. So I had to watch, I'd watch them do from the side about four feet away. Uh, I was watching them, Jack Black and the rock and Kevin Hart do an interview with Australia over, you know, like over uh, what is it, satellite. Um, and that was fun. And that got me to like relax because I saw the mood they were in. So I was able to like watch the mood they were in and be like, okay, I, I think I'm going to get away with this, with the promo off. So then I got there, sat down, said hi to everyone. The rock totally remembered me from the Baywatch junket which was so, so such a sweet thing to see him remember because oh yeah man you got you brought the belt again that's awesome so that was all the stuff that happened off camera before they turned on the camera so it was really great um and then uh, then it started like they basically because that's what you do you don't get to like hey are you okay they don't hold your hand they're just like as soon as you sit down here's the camera talking to cameras we'll give you the cue but as soon as I sat down, they told me I had four minutes. So, ah, oh, man, I had to adjust to four minutes instead of five. And trust me, when you only those minutes are so precious when you're doing this. So, sat down. They gave me the sign of how much time I had. Um, I was like, all right. So then I just just dived into it. You know, hey, Collider fans, boy, and Smartdown fans, blah blah blah. Got into it, and then I and the Rock was really great. The back and forth. He was really like you know great with uh, Jack Black and Kevin Hart, saying how they're funnier than he is, and well, he's just a gracious guy, man. For all his confidence and all his motivation, and all his work, he's just a gracious guy. And you, I can't explain to you what it's like to be in the Rock's energy. He's just a, you just you just sense this is a good man. It's a good man who who has his opinions on things. Is very uh, you know. Uh, strong-minded about what he believes, strong-willed about what he believes, but he's also incredibly warm and kind. So you have that combination. It's a rare combination. It's, and I think a lot of people said the same thing about Schwarzenegger. And so the, it, it makes sense when people like kind of connect those guys and compare them because they very much are comparable. So I sat down, did the thing, started, did the, and I said, you know, do the promo. And you can tell their reaction. Those are genuine reactions because I did not run it by them before I asked them. Um, so then boom, we did it. And I did, I, you know, he's like, are you going to start as I did the promo? Kevin Hart didn't, the, the champion thing fell off the belt, which was hilarious. And then Jack Black did it, but Jack Black bit his tongue. And then when it was over, the rock was so gracious. Cause I asked him like, who won? And he was just like, yeah, you guys were all great. And so, and that was perfect. And yeah, maybe I didn't get the rock to do a promo, but it was also something different, you know? And I didn't just ask him, Hey, how did you come to the script? Or what were you interested in? Or what drew you to the project? This was more about them having fun and relaxing, doing something kind of new or out of their comfort zone because you know i know i I mentioned nacho libre but jack black never did a promo uh in the movie for as nacho libre right he it was more about him trying to figure out how to how to be successful as a wrestler and the rock obviously knows how to do promos i've never seen kevin hart do a promo so it was just a lot of fun to see them play with the parameters of this and the rock i bet the rock i feel like the rock probably enjoyed the fact that he didn't have to do a lot of the heavy lifting in the interview uh, and, you know, he put it on Snapchat. So all of that was just a phenomenal experience. And then when it was over, I played a little video for The Rock for, uh, for uh, Christian's uh, daughter, Viviana, like asking him to come to, his, uh, to, to her birthday. And so that was really sweet. And then we shook hands with everyone. And The Rock was really complimentary when the cameras were turned off. Like, he just said, man, that was great, dude. You're just, you're just really good at doing this, man. So it was just... All around, just an awesome experience. And Kevin Hart was really sweet. Later on, I ran into Kevin Hart later on that night in the hotel, and he was just very uh, complimentary as well. So all around, just a phenomenal experience uh, with those with those three. And, and I walked away, like, just happy. Because when you spend three days stressing that fuck out about what you're going to ask them and that you really want to do well for Collider because you want to keep your job and you want uh, your bosses to know they can rely on you to do something unique and different and fun... Um, you feel great when you when you accomplish it. And so that's that's all I felt. And I was able to relax and go to the bar and just I took like an hour away from everybody and just kind of sat with my thoughts and listened to some music and just kind of like savored it. You know, I, I, 
it's really important. I, I learned this as I'm getting older to savor the uh, experiences and the opportunities and the things you you go through because who knows when it's going to go away and who knows what's going to happen and who knows it, it, you know if I'll just keep doing this for the rest of my life but I'm always going to be a fan and that's the foundation of what I do is yes I get to do all these things and I like to be professional about them and, I, and I'm learning how what the steps are and everything like that as I as I have more experiences in this business but I, at the foundation of everything I'm a fan I'm a movie fan. I'm a TV fan. I'm a fan of these people and these work and their works. And so I get a special kind of joy interview the, interviewing them and talking with them about their work, their lives. Um, because I, I don't know if I've said this before, but my goal in life is to be uh, kind of like an interviewer, like uh, Mark Marin and all these uh, other guys. You know, I would say Charlie Rose, except Charlie Rose, you know, had the sexual assault allegations. So I certainly don't want to be like him. But what he had is what I would like, which is this, you know, uh, interview show one-on-one with people where you can just get into the meat of things of what they do. That's, I, I just love to talk to people and I enjoy hearing about their worlds and their lives and, and what they were to do. And, you know, a junket is not necessarily the best place to, uh, kind of scratch that itch, but, but it's close, you know, so you get a little bit of time and it's, it's fun to test yourself. Can you do it in a limited amount of time? Do you need that whole hour or can you do it in five minutes? And so it was just, just, a, just a, a good uh, experience overall. Um, had some drinks with everyone before we left. Got on the plane, flew back, went to work the next morning, if you can believe it. Like I got off the plane at 6.30 in the morning, drove, or drove to my house, uh, took a shower, had some breakfast, uh, and then rolled into work and worked a half a day. So that was my life. That was the whole trip. Um, and it was a lot of fun. And all I can tell you is I really appreciate all the compliments and everybody who watched the YouTube video. And you have, if you haven't watched the YouTube video, go watch it. It's a lot of fun. Legitimately a lot of fun. And they really get into it. And their stuff is so funny. You know, my stuff is just set up. Uh, that it's a little playful. But what they do is just incredibly funny. Because they're, they're the performers, not me. I, I'm just... The outlaw, you know, I'm just John Roca having fun. And those guys are like the professionals that do it for a living, you know, make people laugh for a living. So, um, so yeah, so overall, just a phenomenal experience. And I can't recommend Hawaii enough. It's just so beautiful. And everyone is like chill. And at least my experience, it was very laid back and relaxed and, and uh, a lot of fun. And so I can't recommend it enough. Um, so, yeah, there's my experience. There's my experience in Hawaii. Um, and, uh, I don't know what else to tell you about it other than I just had a great time and uh, I was very fortunate and uh, thank you to Collider uh, for um, you know giving me the experience allowing me to have the experience uh, and thank you to everyone and Christian especially for encouraging me and for Perry you know Perry was my sounding board when I was really getting stressed out about stuff because she's done a, a bunch of junkets um, so a lot of that was just just a lot of fun to be able to to, to do that so all right, I should probably wrap up here um, as I'm about to go in, go into work. Uh, just want to tell you guys, thanks again for encouraging me to keep doing the Outlaw Nation and for telling me how like you know you want to, to me to take the time, even if it's only for half an hour, to touch base with you all and uh, and talk with you all. So um, uh, you can hear the construction going on behind me. So I'm gonna make this quick. It's Christmas. I like I said at the beginning of this podcast. I know what happens. I know how how, how down some people get. If you're one of those people that's going to experience this depression, or experience the sadness, or or feel kind of like like you're out of it, I would encourage you to go and do whatever it is to make you happy. Some of you have said like listening to our podcasts, either Top Ten or the Cinephiles or anything that's on the SK Plus podcast channel, like uh, Don't Be a Beardo, uh, Wanger Show, uh, uh, After Schmo, the Schmodown Rundown critically acclaimed uh, the meaning of all those shows that are on uh, the SK Plus podcast channel. So many people have said like they've helped me. It's helped them through dark times. So that's what I encourage you to do. If you're in a bad place, put on some of our favorite of some of your favorite episodes of our shows and and just laugh and go along with us and know that we are like we're doing this because we want to entertain you and want you to enjoy the stuff that we're doing so that's what i would encourage you to do listen to you know if you want to go on a run of top 10 shows or cinephile shows or even outlaw nation shows feel free if you want to reach out and dm me when it's getting bad feel free i might be around here in la this christmas because there's just a lot of stuff just going on it's out of my control that i might have to stay here so i will i won't be working at collider because we'll be on our winter break but 
Yeah, I'll be able to, so I'll be able to DM you back if it gets really bad. So um, just know that I got you. The Outlaw is always in your corner supporting you. Uh, I want you to be the best you can be. Uh, and even when it gets bad, don't be down on yourself because that's part of life. You know, it will pass. Give it time. It will pass. All right. All right. Enjoy yourselves. I'm sure I'll give you another Outlaw Nation before Christmas next week. But I just wanted to say have an awesome rest of your week. Enjoy your weekend. If you go see Star Wars, have a blast seeing Star Wars. Let me know what you thought. And uh, we will talk to you all next week on the Outlaw Nation.